All right, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, Data Dooms webinar. I'm, uh, my name is Benjamin. And today we are going to be uh, talking about why it's essential now to complement your WAF with a bot management uh, solution. So again, my name is Ben. Uh, um, please feel free to ask any question you might have during the webinar. Uh, what we'll do to be efficient is we'll uh, address each of your questions at the end uh, of the webinar and we'll make sure to, uh, to provide as much information as, uh, as we can. So why is it essential to complement your WAF with a bot management solution? First of all, um, you have to be aware that the fact of the fact that bots are a global issue. Um, at Datadome, we have teams uh, both in New York and Paris um, because every CTO, every head of infrastructure, every security personnel around the globe uh, is facing the same issue uh, related to bots. Um, this is why we collect 600 billion of events every day that we analyze in real time for our global customers, uh, TripAdvisor, Rakuten, Classmates.com, uh, Adivinta, for instance. This is why we are deployed in more than 20 data centers uh, all around the planet. Um, and what's quite interesting is that up until maybe two years ago, bot management was kind of considered as um, part of a you know, more global uh, security uh, set of solutions, uh, but last year, only last year, did Forrester uh, publish their first uh, new wave report on bot management, um, which kind of confirmed that uh, this was a topic to be handled separately and that uh, WAF and traditional DIDA solutions um, didn't really cut it uh, anymore. I'm going to first talk to you a bit about the state of automated threats uh, nowadays. Some of you might have seen this uh, figure already, but 30% of the overall web traffic is actually generated by bad bots. I'm not talking about all the bots. Uh, I'm not talking about Google bots here. I'm really talking about bad bots. Those um, bots are mainly responsible for uh, intensive scrap scraping activities. So they um, do generate a lot of requests to, uh, to websites and mobile applications to scrape content. But they are also responsible for credential stuffing attacks. Um, so you know the, the, the activity through which they, they will try to take over your user's account, for instance. They are also responsible for vulnerability scanning and more generally uh, SQL injection. So they will try and look for um, known flows in your application to either slow down or uh, bring down your website. Um, and they are also responsible for layer seven uh, denial of service attacks. So this is the, the overall bot activity that we usually see uh, on our uh, customers' websites and mobile applications. And while, while what we do protect them from is uh, a wide array of uh, automated threats. For those of you who are not uh, familiar with the OWASP, OWASP project, it means Open Web Application Security Project, um, those guys have uh, created a set of different automated threats. So we've talked about account takeover, we've talked about credential stuffing, of course, uh, but bots are also responsible for card cracking. Um, so, you know, the attempt to, uh, to, to, to find uh, credit card information. Um, they are also responsible for server overload. Uh, so their activity might drain your infrastructure, your server resources. Um, and they will also try to create fake accounts or, as we said, uh, look for flaws in your application. Now, what's rendered WAF inefficient at dealing with bots is that those bots have become highly sophisticated. For the first two generation of bots, um, they were they were fairly easy to detect because um, you know they, they were mainly in-house scripts or uh, scraping libraries such as Notch Scrapy um, that couldn't couldn't even execute the JavaScript, um, so they were quite easy to detect. Then we saw um, technologies such as Phantom JS, Casper JS, or Selenium that allowed bots to well, but developers really, to start automating their activity with very good uh, browser lookalike. 
And of course, we are now facing the latest bot generation, the fourth generation, that is using uh, Chrome Headless, for instance, so the, the, the capacity to launch Chrome in common line, um, so that we are now fighting against bots that use the same technology as human beings. Um, and what we are seeing at the moment is that bots are very much relying on um, artificial intelligence kind of approaches to work around uh, security measures that are in place. So static approach to uh, bot detection would work for the first two generation of bots. Um, it was much less efficient against the third generation and it's become completely useless uh, against the fourth and the uh, upcoming uh, generation of uh, automated threats. To give you um, an example as well, um, over the past 18 months, uh, or over, even over the past 12 months, the use of Chrome Headless has gone off the charts. It's actually it's doubled in just one year. Um, and using technologies such as Puppeteer, bots are now using the exact, well, almost the exact same technologies as human beings. And this is true for your website, but it's also very much true for each and every of your, of your customer critical touch point. So they will uh, come after your website, they will come after your mobile applications, and they will also come after your APIs. Talking about mobile applications, um, bots rely on mobile applications to scrape content. Uh, and for instance, they only used to, to, to simply use uh, reverse proxy API calls to query your APIs. Then they evolved and they started using mobile emul emulators. Mm -hmm. And much like bots are now using Chrome Headless to scrape a website, they are also using real devices to, to, to get their way. And we've all seen uh, this kind of uh, device farms on the internet, uh, you know, posted on social networks. So these are actually bots using real mobile device uh, to try and access your content, your website, or your uh, user accounts. Um, but that's not all. Um, bots are also more and more massively distributed. What does that mean? It means that the span of the attack distribution has grown wider and wider. From using a single IP address uh, hosted from a server, for instance, to using millions of different residential IP addresses. And this is not even uh, counting on IPv6 uh, IPs. Bots are um, now you know, massively distributed, and we are fighting bots distributed over uh, millions of IP addresses, distributed in every country uh, on the planet. And they will use a combination of data center IP addresses, static and mobile residential IPs, which will beat uh, all static uh, statistical approaches to, to detect uh, this traffic. To give you an example, uh, you can very easily now rent uh, a combination of residential, mobile, and data center IPs from different countries around the, the, the world. So this, is, this has become uh, fairly cheap to do, and that means that you cannot rely on IP addresses to actually detect uh, bot traffic. So if we were to sum it up, bots are designed to fly under the radar. They are using the same technology as, as human beings, because they are using the same web browser, they are using a mobile device farms, so the traffic is actually coming from a real uh, mobile device, and they are massively distributed on the residential IPs, which makes them look like uh, a bunch of human beings just using what your website or your uh, mobile application. To put it in a nutshell, uh, the war is on. Now the question is, how do we? What, what does it take to win this war? Um, the first thing to um, to keep in mind is that um, every single request must be analyzed. So we cannot rely on a sample of uh, of requests. We need to analyze each and every single hit request to your web servers. This means handling a huge amount of uh, event relating uh, related data so what kind of data do we uh, do we analyze server side will um, of course 
uh, check whether the HTTP request makes sense. So are the headers cons consistent? Um, are we, uh, you know, facing a fake Google bot, for instance? 30% of uh, every bot claiming to be Google is actually not coming from uh, the search engine. So this is the first kind of a, a data set that will be uh, analyzed. Um, so that's server-side. Client-side will uh, rely on uh, client-side scripts to uh, challenge the JavaScript rendering engine and detect uh, browser automation technologies. We've mentioned PhantomJS, we've mentioned Casper.js, we've mentioned Selenium and Chrome Headless. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll try to, we will actually track um, anything that is available from the browser. Uh, what kind of plugins are uh, actually active on the browser? What's the font of the browser? Uh, what is the language, you know, consistent with the, the, the time zone and the territory? Uh, is there any browser history? Um, all those elements are, you know, uh, more information that we can rely on to detect uh, automated traffic. Then we'll track the device. Is the request actually coming from a real device or is the device being faked um, for some reason? So what kind of um, operating system uh, is active? Uh, is the screen resolution consistent with the device that is being announced by the request? Um, all those elements will also allow us to detect uh, whether it's uh, real or fake you know, automated traffic. And the last thing is that we'll track the user uh, as such. So we'll do user event tracking. Um, one of the main thing we do is to track a mouse movement, for instance, uh, if it's on a browser, or scroll, click, touch event if it's on a, on a tablet or a mobile phone. And all those events combined will allow us to detect the most sophisticated bots. So we cannot just simply rely on a set of static rules, such as you know a, a WAF would actually do, to detect this automated traffic. It's way too sophisticated um, to be able to be detected uh, this way. All in all, Datadome collects and analyzes in real time more than 600 billion events every day. So that's a huge amount of, of data. The question, of course, then, is uh, how about you? How exposed are your domains uh, to bot traffic? What part of your traffic is actually human? What part of your traffic is actually automated? And within this automated traffic, what kind of bots are you facing? Are there good bots, so search engines, social networks, technical partners? Are there bad bots? Uh, bots responsible for intensive scraping, bots responsible for credential stuffing or layer 7 DOS attack? Or are they commercial bots? Bots for which we've been able to identify an operating company, a big data company that relies on your content, on your data for their business. The second question is usually how much of your infrastructure resources, so we are talking about uh, about bandwidth, we are talking about systems resources, how much of it is actually being drained by these illegitimate bots? This is a very key question because, um, first of all, it's money down the drain for you, uh, as you know, you are actually paying for infrastructure that is being used by bots. Second of all, this might be uh, an explanation to performance issues of your website or, or your, your mobile application. And finally, what are the most aggressive bot threats that you are facing? Are you under DDoS attacks at the moment? Are you facing intensive scraping activities that might uh, jeopardize your website or mobile application performance? Um, are you facing vulnerability scanning but trying to uh, bring down your website? Um, so those are very important questions because this will prompt uh, different kinds of responses to make sure that you are uh, properly protected. What does it take to find out? It takes just minutes, basically. Deploy in minutes. So Datadom is a full SaaS solution. So you can deploy in minutes. 
Um, there's no credit card required, no contract. You can deploy and just observe uh, your automated traffic in real time for 30 days. This is absolutely free. There's absolutely uh, no commitment. Um, so thank you for your attention. Um, we've had a couple of questions during the during the webinar. What we'll do now is I'm with uh, an account manager from Datadome, uh, and uh, what I suggest we do is um, that they uh, address your questions, uh, give you as much information as we can, um, and of course feel free to ask more questions if there's anything, uh, any any additional information that you, you might need. Thank you very much.